Welcome to section 5 of Microbiology. This is an overview image of the viruses. In this section, we'll be discussing roseola, or HHV6, which you can see right here. Look at this eerie looking baby doll laying here on the floor. He has a bouquet of roses representing roseola. Roses, roseola. You may have also noticed this fire at the head of the bed. Well, this roseola story is about this fire and how it started. Notice the dark colors used in this image. Even with the fire, you can see the dark color schematic. As you may have learned by now, we like to use dark color schemes to represent DNA viruses. So the dark colors in this room indicate that roseola is a DNA virus. As we mentioned, the head of the bed is on fire, and the flames will eventually spread to the foot of the bed where the trunk is located. This represents the idea that a rash starts on the face and then travels quickly to the trunk. The same thing that caught the bed on fire also knocked the trunk over, spilling out this weird roseola doll. And you can see the char all over the baby toy. This helps emphasize the fact that the rash is really widespread all over the child's body. So again, starts on the face, the head of the bed, travels down to the trunk, the foot of the bed, and then covers the entire body. So a widespread maculopapular rash is seen. Now this oil lamp is what caused the entire fire. It was carelessly knocked over and spilled its oily contents onto the bed. The lamp itself represents fever. When you are near a lamp, you get warm. And these flames that reach high above the bed emphasize the fact that roseola fevers can be high. So again, lamp and high fire for high fevers. Now we finally found the culprit of this mess. It's this rowdy dog running around. She knocked off the oil lamp and caused a nasty fire. Like most rowdy, clumsy dogs, this dog is salivating like crazy. Look at all that saliva pouring out of her mouth. This will help you remember that this virus is transmitted through saliva. So again, dog saliva for transmission through saliva. In addition, she left behind this log line of dog slobber. This line of slobber represents the fact that roseola is a linear virus. It's too bad the dog doesn't use all that slobber to put the fire out herself. Anyways, this long line of slobber stands for linear virus. We can see now that in addition to this eerie doll, this trunk contains several rolls of yarn, which you can see spilling around. Now the purple roll has been dragged by the dog, leaving two strands strewn across the floor behind her. These double lines created by the strands represent double-stranded DNA. Double lines of yarn for double-stranded DNA virus. On the box, we see these ominous markings, 666, do not open. That's pretty freaky. If this eerie doll was hiding out in this 666 box, it's pretty safe to say that the doll's evil. Anyways, the number 666 represents that roseola is HHV6. Now look up at the bulletin board here. The room houses a Catholic minister, as indicated by that cross on the necklace. Next to the cross necklace is a paper listing the seven deadly sins, an idea often attributed to Catholicism. And the number seven will help you remember that HHV7 is also included in this image. It can cause roseola just like HHV6 with that 666 box. But HHV7 is a far less common cause than HHV6. So again, seven deadly sins for HHV7. Now look at this telephone ringing like crazy. It's shaking about and practically having a seizure. Well, this shaking telephone does, in fact, represent a seizure. Seizures often occur in patients with roseola. So a patient will get a high fever, and then they get a seizure, a febrile seizure, followed by a maculopapular rash. In fact, this is generally the order in which symptoms present. You start with the high fever. This induces a seizure, which is also called a febrile seizure, or a seizure caused by a high fever. Then a maculopapular rash develops, again, starting at the head and traveling to the rest of the body. Now that we've covered the details of the disease, let's do a quick question to apply this. A 13-month-old girl presents to her pediatrician with a red rash all across her body for one day. Her temperature in the clinic is 37.9 Celsius, and the patient appears mildly uncomfortable. Upon further history, the father explains the patient had a temperature of 39.9 Celsius at home four days ago. Around this time, the patient also demonstrated a 30-second period of unresponsiveness, uncontrollable shaking movements, and open eyelids. The physician suspects a viral infection. Which of the following is most likely true regarding the virus? A. It is an RNA virus. B. It is a naked virus. C, the genome is circular, or D, it is double-stranded. Hopefully from the question stem you notice that the patient had a high fever and a seizure. She had a temperature of 39.9 Celsius, that's a high fever, and what sounds like a febrile seizure. Then she develops a rash, and this would have been three days later for the patient, because she's had the rash for one day. Now this is a classic presentation of roseola, or HHV6. So which of the options is true regarding HHV6? Well, A is incorrect, and that's because HHV6 is a DNA virus, not an RNA. DNA virus. Recall the darker color scheme and the blue walls indicate that this is a DNA virus. Now B is wrong because HHV6 is enveloped, not naked. Now most viruses are enveloped, so you should by default think that they are enveloped unless there is something in the image that is blatantly naked. And there's nothing naked in that image. Even that baby doll is wearing underwear. Anyways, HHV6 is enveloped, not naked. So B is wrong. 
Now C is wrong because HHV6 has a linear genome, not a circular one. Remember that long line of saliva the dog left behind? That means it's linear. Now D is the correct answer. The dog had its foot stuck in some yarn and pulled it away, leaving a double line of yarn behind it. So it's a double-stranded DNA virus. See this yarn right here helping you remember that roseola is double-stranded. And with that, you know all you need to memorize for roseola.